Meantime, let's get straight to the market action. Ellen Zetner of Morgan Stanley Wealth Management joins us now. Ellen, welcome. Thank you. Good to be with you. Uh, there's a lot for us to dig through here uh, in terms of what has helped to move the markets, especially as we do see another down week for all the major averages. Uh, we've had more hawkish commentary from Powell and other Fed officials this week. You see the market continuing to parse out this so-called Trump trade uh, and economic data that, that largely has looked pretty resilient. Where do you think we go from here and what do you think drives the narrative? So from from here, I think as we further digest exactly what can a second term under President Trump deliver and when uh, will be important, because it seemed clear that the market immediately was pricing in that uh, Trump deliver all of the perceived good things uh, about his plans uh, and none of the bad things and taking uh, it almost for granted that anything promised on the campaign trail around immigration, uh, around trade, would not be delivered upon. And so what you do then is set yourself up for downside risk as you start to parse out what is the timing of these different things, right? You get a lot of the negatives if you uh, are going to uh, 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 send 12 million plus people back across the border, uh, if you're going to put blanket tariffs on the uh, rest of world, right, you get the negatives from those up front, and then you get positives from, say, more favorable tax cuts uh, later on in 2026. So it just seemed like there was a little bit of jumping the gun here and a little bit of possibly hiding our heads in the sand about what he actually could deliver. I think that's a very key point, especially when I've had conversations with folks that are close to President-elect Trump or have worked with him in the first administration and say you should take his campaign promises very, very seriously, especially if you're trying to game out what future policy could look like. So what does that mean in terms of what we're seeing in the bond market and how investors should think about the volatility this could inject more broadly across asset classes? Yeah, so I think for the bond market in particular, um, there are two things that, that it has to digest. It has to digest, um, you know, are there any different assumptions we need to make about expansion of the deficit? Whether it was a Democratic sweep, Republican sweep, mixed Congress with a Democrat or Republican president, we were going to get a larger deficit. Borrowing needs are going to rise, if not only for the fact that, that the structural deficit, because of the interest uh, expense on the debt, is going to continue to rise. It doesn't matter if the Fed drops rates 200 basis points tomorrow, average interest on the debt is that rate is continuing to rise. So bond market needed to react to uh, uh, the, the sort of what's perceived as possibly a fact that under a Republican sweep, you would get further tax cuts. Um, the understanding that tariffs do not replace uh, uh, lost revenues from tax cuts, period, um, and that that does mean a larger deficit. Um, and so that's going to impact longer run uh, rates in the bond market. The other thing is, as you mentioned, we have gotten more positive data on the economy. Chair Powell has been more guarded in terms of maybe we cut further in December, maybe we don't. Um, I do think that they deliver another cut in December, but I think thereafter we have to understand that they may slow the pace. Hmm of cuts in 2025. So, so the market digested that as well. So, Ellen, at what point do you think does the equity market start to really think about Trump policies as an economic factor all to themselves, affecting inflation, uh, affecting corporate growth prospects? Is it not until we see the amount of money that's being spent on uh, the immigration policies, for example, or the uh, amount of money that's being spent on extending tax cuts? Yeah, so I think it's a great question, the timing. Is Inauguration Day a sell on the news? I mean, Inauguration Day comes and goes, but you still don't have uh, the, the exact time of, timing of when policies play out. But he has uh, nominated or put forth names for hardliners on trade on immigration. So we have to take those policies seriously. And again, those are going to challenge the economy first before you get benefits from lower tax cuts. So there's going to be a lot of cross currents here hitting the market. You're going to have probably a more forgiving regulatory policy under uh, a, a second President Trump. And so that's going to impact some sectors more favorably than others, obviously. Mm. 
immigration is going to be a challenge for uh, construction, for food processing areas that relied very heavily on immigration, labor. And so there's going to be a lot of cross currents there with clear winners and losers.